Hey everyone, I hope you're all feeling great and ready for another video. Well, it's one of those videos where it just randomly pops into my mind after watching the movie, but this happened the same day as the reckless idea, so two ideas in one day means another two videos for you all. That curse on Dumbledore's hand. We know nothing about it, only that it's fatal. We don't know what it exactly does, how it works and the overall story behind it being placed on the Gaunt Signet Ring. Another thing that interests me is the Gaunt Ring itself. Self. If you're a long time subscriber of the channel then you'll know I love talking about and analysing some of the smaller things that go under the radar without explanation and today is definitely one of those videos. So everyone with that being said if you want to hear about the curse on Dumbledore's hand, the Horcrux ring and everything that goes with both then stick around, grab yourself a butterbeer and please enjoy today's video. Okay everyone, let's begin. Now the first thing I've got to mention is the ring. The ring itself, because although it's a single item, it does consist of two parts. It's important to note that only the ring and not the stone was a horcrux, which is why the stone worked after it was separated from the ring. So Dumbledore had this ring for a short amount of time. He was no stranger to the symbol on the stone either. He knew what it meant and he knew he was holding one of the Deathly Hallows, albeit in a slightly modified form. The trouble Dumbledore had was that he didn't know how to truly use it. The obvious thing to do would be to simply place the ring on his finger and it would work, but he was far too clever to recognise that, that this was something out of the ordinary. It had a dark aura around it and was something that the Hogwarts headmaster didn't originally want to test on himself anyway. However, as he examined it, he also began to wonder just how the ring did in fact work. Not aware of the fact it wasn't the ring itself, but the stone that would give him what he truly wanted, his family. He longed for nothing more than to just see his loved ones again, especially his sister Ariana, with whom he had been plagued with guilt over for the better part of a century now. So the story goes that Dumbledore even brought the Sword of Gryffindor with him as it absorbed the power to destroy Horcruxes, meaning his good intent was there from the beginning. However, as he had always known, he was not worthy enough to unite the Hallows. He had proved it time and time again. Powerful enough to wield the Elder Wand, yes. That could not be questioned, but giving in to temptation when he was required to remain strong was Dumbledore's downfall. So desperate was he to see his sister, his parents, that for a split second, everything he had learned, every instinct within him, drew him into the desperation he had within him. He placed a ring on his finger and activated a horrifically devastating dark curse that immediately began devouring his entire body. Dumbledore's quick thinking set in and he sought to destroy the source of the curse itself, the ring, which did cut it off from the dark root it was connected to, however it was too late at this point as the curse began to slowly spread. The genius of Severus Snape managed to contain the curse to the headmaster's hand, but it would eventually kill him. Now this was a seriously powerful curse. It was meant to do harm and do it fast, which makes me think that the other Horcruxes could have been enchanted with such a protection also. Think about it for a second. Let's take the Diadem of Ravenclaw for example. It gives the wearer extensive wisdom and knowledge, yet nobody had ever wore it after Tom Riddle turned it into a Horcrux. You put that corrupted diadem on your head and I'm pretty sure something bad is going to happen to you. Then we can look at the locket. Now the locket needed to be opened first to unlock its master defence mechanism, but when it was closed it brought out the worst insecurities of the wearer while hanging around one's neck. And we've also got the Hufflepuff cup. This is a cup, made for drinking. Can't imagine anyone tried drinking out of that after Tom Riddle made it into a horcrux, and if they did, well who knows what kind of awful dark magic that would be inflicted upon them. Just because we never got to see the defence of the diadem and the cup doesn't mean that they didn't have them. In fact, it would kind of be silly to think that they didn't. Anyway, let's continue on and we'll now look at the curse. Now the curse to the hand appears to inflict a lot of pain. 
it turns the skin grey and it's as if the hand is all withered and actually decomposing. It also depends how long the ring is left on also. Dumbledore quickly removed the ring after activating the curse. In fact, he barely slid it onto his finger before he felt its power overwhelm him. The curse also appears to drain the life force of the person and it's meant to do it quickly. I don't think Voldemort intended for a slow, painful death, because otherwise, the person in possession of the ring could definitely pass on the knowledge to someone else that came with finding it. Even Dumbledore admitted that he could have been dead in mere seconds. It's incredible to think that the ring itself lay hidden, dormant for so many years at the discretion of Tom Riddle, who had no idea that he actually possessed the Resurrection Stone, the power to bring back the dead. Come to think of it, even if he did know, I'm not sure what use he'd have for it, as Riddle had no interest in anything dead. He feared death. It was immortality that was on his mind. Tom had no appreciation for the ring after it served its purpose. A far cry from its previous owner, Mervolo Gaunt, who was obsessively fond of it as it was linked to the Peveril brothers. It's probably best read from the encounter between Marvolo and Ministry official Bob Ogden, where he says, Say this. Say this. Know where it is? Know where it came from? Centuries it's been in our family. That's how far back we go, and pure blood all the way. Now how much I've been offered for this? With the Peveril coat of arms engraved on the stone? Anyway, if Tom did know that it was the Resurrection Stone, maybe that's why he lost interest in wearing it so quickly. Don't forget, Tom proudly wore the ring around Hogwarts, as if it was a trophy. Then all of a sudden, he no longer wants to wear it, turns it into a Horcrux, and hides it where he hopes nobody will ever find it. Dumbledore had other plans, however. I genuinely love Voldemort's reaction to discovering the ring was gone, where it reads... He was standing inside a ruined stone shack, and the rotting floorboards were ripped apart at his feet. A disinterred golden box lay open and empty beside the hole, and Voldemort's scream of fury vibrated inside his head. How Dumbledore handles the whole situation is also incredible, and another one of my favourite things about him, his composure. Despite knowing that he was going to die because of that ring, he still has the mental strength to wear it after he's destroyed the Horcrux within it. He wears it to Horace Slughorn's house because he knows that the Professor will recognise the ring and will hopefully acknowledge that Dumbledore has discovered Tom Riddle's past and could truly be successful in stopping the Dark Lord if only Slughorn would hand over the correct memory. Now, it's unknown what happened to the shell of the ring after it was separated from the stone. Perhaps Dumbledore discarded it, or he kept it in his desk with the destroyed Diary Horcrux in his office. The stone, now noticeably cracked from the blade of the Sword of Gryffindor, still functioned as normal, only with Harry truly accepting he was ready to die, would he receive the stone and the gift of speaking to his parents once more, along with Sirius and Remus. I definitely wish we could have seen Dumbledore go to the Gaunt Shack and find the ring in the movie. I think it would have linked everything a lot better, but hey, that's why books are books, that's why the books are still here and will always outrank the movies. Anyway guys, with that being said, that is my video on the curse on Dumbledore's hand and the Gaunt family signet ring. My question for you today is this. Do you believe Tom Riddle knew he was in possession of the Resurrection Stone? Let me know in the comment section below. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great day and always remember, be happy. Thank you so much for watching. I truly, truly appreciate your support. Everyone, notifications of uploads are more important than ever. So please, if you haven't already, turn those notifications on to make sure you're notified the moment my video goes live. Making videos is what I love to do, it's my dream and my passion, however it does cost time and money to produce this content, so if you have a dollar to spare to support me on Patreon, in exchange for some exclusive unseen content, then you can click the Patreon link below or at the end of this video. Please only support me if you can afford it. And make sure to follow me on Instagram at InstaDNJ and on Twitter at PotterFolklore. Check out my other videos appearing on screen and please make sure, most importantly, to hit that subscribe button. 
Thanks again, everyone, and please have a great day.